Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about myths about autism. Um, so stick around, you don't want to miss this one. And after this video, I want you to comment down below which one was the most ridiculous myth about autism in your opinion. Myth number one about autism. People with autism don't have a sense of humor. It might be true for some people with autism, but it's more likely that the individual expresses their sense of humor in a different way. Maybe what's funny to us is different than what's funny to other people. I have always had a weird sense of humor and a very scripted sense of humor as far as playing practical jokes on people. But what I think is funny, the average person may not think is funny. Does your family not get your sense of humor? I had a best friend growing up who was not autistic, but she was later diagnosed with ADHD. And we kind of shared in the same sense of humor. So maybe just neurodivergent people in general have a odd sense of humor, you could say. Myth number two about people with autism. People with autism can't stand to be touched. The truth to that is, it depends per person. They may have high sensory sensitivities and just do not enjoy the sensation of being touched in general. But many people with autism enjoy hugs, a light massage. Um, I like my hair to be touched by other people. I've always enjoyed in high school if someone sat behind me and braided my hair. I love that sensation. We don't necessarily initialize hugs. I know um, when I'm out in public or at work, I don't generally go up to people and hug them. But when it comes to my immediate family, I always hug my mom, dad, brother, husband, son, daughter, grandkids. Those are the people that I'm going to hug. So I want to know on that one, as someone who's autistic, how you feel about being touched in general. If you just can't stand it, or you're okay with it. Are you hypersensitive to touch or hyposensitive to touch? Let me know. Myth number three is a really big one, I think, and, and one I just recently did a video about, and that's the myth is people with autism are cold and lack empathetic feelings. This is not true. This is just a myth. We very much feel emotions. We just maybe can't express it very well to others or understand what others are going through. Some people with autism may come across as cold or uncaring, maybe because someone is sitting in front of you telling you that their spouse just passed away and your appearance looks like the same, the same effect, flat effect. I, I experience empathy really strangely. Um, if somebody tells me their spouse passed away and they are crying and boohooing, I can sense it and feel it. And I imitate and express the emotion they are expressing, although I'm not feeling it, if that makes any sense. I do care deeply about other people. It just comes across differently for me. I don't know that I'm able to feel sadness like someone else is feeling it or experiencing it, yet I can feel what they're feeling. I did a video about it recently. I'm sounding very robotic today, aren't I? I don't know what's up with that. Myth number four. All individuals with autism have savant abilities. Um, it makes you think about Rain Man. That movie came out a long time ago when a lot of us really didn't know what autism was. And we assumed people with autism, because of that movie, had to have savant ability, abilities. But that's just not true. It says only about 10% of individuals with autism exhibit savant abilities. I'm not one of them. I do tend to recognize numbers a lot like car tags when I'm driving down the road I'm just drawn to the numbers um, numbers in general if you have a cool savant ability 
would you comment down below and let me know what that is? I'm pretty fascinated by it. Um, for, it says that some individuals with autism have what are called splinter skills, meaning skills in one or two areas that are above their overall performance abilities. I know on my testing, my IQ testing, when I was doing the on the Dillis Kaplan Executive Functioning System, when I did the test, she noted that Jennifer displayed a personal strength for identifying similar details among items that can lead to commonality sorting, but struggled to infer meanings of various words based on verbal context clues, word context. This may indicate a strength for nonverbal details, but a weakness for combining verbal details. Both are common features in individuals with high functioning autisms. Myth number five about autism is that autism is a mental health disorder. The truth is it's a neurological disorder. Studies of people with autism have revealed abnormalities of the brain structure in the neurotransmitter levels. What's commonly overlooked is that individuals with developmental disabilities are twice as likely to have co-occurring mental health disorders that also need treatment. There's a lot of people who are diagnosed with autism that are also diagnosed with ADHD or that are all also diagnosed with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Here's another myth that autism is a recent and relatively new thing. The truth is it was first described by a scientist, Leo Kanner, in 1943. But the earliest description of children now known to have autism was written in 1799. Um, we think of people now like Mozart, who may have been autistic. Some of these people who were very successful, they came across as odd to others, but they had unique minds, and had a lot to, to give, contribute to our society, are thought now that they may have been autistic also. In fact, it used to be believed like around the 1950s, there was a thing called refrigerator mothers, and they believed that children had gotten autism from mothers who were distant or cold to their children. But it's been determined that parenting style has nothing to do with autism. But, you know, I would suggest maybe these what appeared like cold moms, maybe they also had autism. My daughter thought I was narcissistic for many years. Um, and I never knew that till I found a book at her house called um, something like How to Understand Narcissistic Mothers. And I asked her about it, and she said she did think I was narcissistic until I got my diagnosis. So many of those mothers probably were seen as narcissistic when they really had autism and were misunderstood. So the, the last myth that I want to mention is the fact that People think that most people with ASD have severe intellectual disabilities, and that's just not true. Most people with ASD are able to function relatively normally in society. People still just do not understand this concept. Um, I had a lady call me recently that wants to come out to our facility and wants a friend of hers to perform and sing for my residents. And she brought up the fact that this girl who wants to come and perform has a high functioning autism. Now, I don't, I was a little taken back when she told me about that because I didn't understand what did that have to do with why did she think I needed to know that? So, you know, I almost told her at that point, well, I have high functioning autism according to my diagnosis. But I didn't. I'm just going to wait until that day and, and meet this girl that's coming to sing and probably talk to her. You know, somebody will have something in common with me. And then maybe I'll probably in person tell that lady that about my diagnosis. If we don't share our diagnosis with other people, they're going to continue to think that autism is just one way. And they're going to continue to have biases if we don't share, we too have autism. So they can understand it's a wide variety of people. 
and that we function on different levels, but we're still capable and still able. So I hope you enjoyed this video as we were talking about myths and autism. And comment down below if there's any myths I did not cover. Maybe I'll do a part two. What other myths are there? I, I did not mention the one about girls um, are not seen as having autism as much as boys because I think there's been some improvement in that area and researchers are starting to realize that more girls are autistic than was thought before. So there is improvement in that area. I think there's so many videos now on YouTube um, about women who have autism that is kind of debunking that theory anyway. So it has taken me two years to get to the level I am with sh sharing. Almost everyone in my life now knows about my, my diagnosis, explained it to people, to when I was comfortable, to whatever situation was going on, and it's just unfolded that way for me. You can go at whatever pace you want to share your diagnosis. It's just a journey of understanding that we are on together, and I'm glad you're here with me as I'm learning about this journey. Comment down below whatever you'd like to talk about. I love, love, love getting your comments and I will respond to all of your comments. And please respond to other people's comments that you relate to and make friends. Uh, we can relate to pe other people with autism and we need each other. So thanks for watching this video. And if you haven't subscribed and you enjoy content about adults with autism, Go down there and subscribe. Would love to have you on my channel. Hey, you got a suggestion for a video? Um, I take that seriously. And if you mention something I'm interested in making a video about, we'll do that. I'm getting white hairs. I'm getting a lot of white hairs. Oh my goodness. To keep them or dye them, that's the question. I kind of like it. <laughs> See you in the next video. Bye.